Hello, students. Welcome to uh, Lifetime Activities. Uh, this is our unit one that we're starting here. Uh, as you can see that I will be recording this for learning purposes. Um, this is our recorded class, so you'll get this on the course announcements. Uh, remember, we have live classes the first and third Wednesday of, of every month. So uh, a couple things, if we were in class, you'd follow along with those. But because this is a PE class, we got to get up and get moving a little bit. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do what we call brain fuel. Brain fuel is just basically to get you up and moving and about. So we're just going to do some simple, simple exercises here. I'll move the camera up a little bit so you can still see me. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, 30 seconds of running in place. Okay, so just slowly we're going to just start to run in place just like this. Not going to count very much, but you can count in your head about what 30 seconds is. What this does, just get the blood flowing throughout your body, get you ready to think, get ready to move. Should feel your heart rate start going up, breathing a little harder. Okay, I think that's good about right there. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do arm circles. Okay, I like to put my thumbs up as we're doing these. You can go back, smaller circles, go forward, smaller circles, and it works different parts of your arm. If you do big circles, works a little bit more. Should feel it in your chest, your arms, be able to keep that kind of flexibility there. Okay, the next one, you're not going to really be able to see it because I'll be off camera, but you're just going to go up on your feet, hill raises. Okay, so you just go up on your toes. You're going to feel it in your calves. You want to stretch these out. A lot before when you're running, your Achilles comes down there. I had a friend not too long ago. He was jumping off a box and uh, snapped his Achilles tendon. So you do not want to do that, right? So getting these calves all stretched out and ready to go. I hope you're right there. Okay. The last one we're going to do here is a uh, squat hold. So what you want to do, just bend your knees so you're down in a squat. You probably can't see me very well. I'll lower this a little bit more. But you want to get down in a squat and you're going to hold it there. If you have a hard time kind of getting down in a squat, because a lot of people do, you can go against a wall and do a hold that way against a wall there. And then that will kind of support you and you put your back but you're going to feel that in your quads and you can just move around a little bit, get your legs all stretched out, ready to go there. All right. Some people, if you, it gets too tough down there, just kind of go shake it out in your legs and go down again. All right. Okay. Hopefully that kind of warms you up a little bit. That gives you some exercise to think about on your activity log as well as you're looking at there. So let's move on to the next thing here. Okay. So one thing we want to do, look at pace, participate. Okay. Be positive. Encourage others. Uh, add to the lesson. This is more if we would be in, in the classroom, but this is what we want to do as we're going through the class. Active, present, take notes, ask questions, discuss. Continuous 30-minute daily, sustainable, moderate to vigorous physical activity, okay? So find something to do, whether it's walk around the block, do some little exercise like we just did. As you can see, I'm starting to breathe a little bit harder, I guess. <laughs> and uh, evaluate yourself, how you can motivate yourself. 
become better, meet goals. Um, as we talked about before in the last one, as you're physically moving, endorphins come to your brain, you're you're a lot more um, active and able to do things. Okay, so uh, how you can do better here, okay? Make sure you're doing your weekly quizzes and your activity logs. I will be opening those up today. Um, uh, weekly lessons and, and quizzes. If you haven't done them, go back and do them, right? So that's how you can do better is get those things done. Okay, your first letter of the week that you'll want to write down is C. So make sure you write down C as the first letter. There's gonna be five letters. I know quite a few people missed the, the word of the week last time. You can always go back and change that because I have unlimited attempts, but this one is gonna be five uh, letters, okay? So make sure you get all five. Actually, there's six letters, I lied. <laughs> Okay, today what we're going to go over today, we're going to go over uh, sports, games, and dances around the world. Um, we're going to kind of go through a little bit of the history of how it all all started um, and why. Okay, the origin of sports and dance. Um, so it, it universally appears in all cultures. It just looks differently, right? Both in the past and present. Each culture has a different definition. So, for example, I did spend some time over in Europe. And in Europe, they actually, uh, you know, their big sporting event over there is what they call football, which we call soccer here in the United States. And they have that a lot more, you know, over here, probably our one of our biggest sports that we look at is probably uh, football, um, NFL um or college whatever you you like or um basketball okay uh they got a lot of dancing it looks different ways in different places uh but we'll kind of go over all of that kind of stuff okay your second letter that you need to write down for your word of the week is h h Okay, so where did it begin? Okay, so we're going to be talking a little bit about a uh, paleo Paleolithic um, area of what they kind of did here, uh, how they use sporting and physical activity, um, how it happened, worked in ancient Greece. As you can see a lot of people in the audience there, and then the, the Chinese Empire. What we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, watch a video in regards to just kind of the brief history of sports. Ah, sports. The word comes from the old French desporter or deporter, meaning to take pleasure or entertain. And that's the whole point of sports, to entertain people. The first evidence of sporting activities goes back to cave drawings, more specifically depictions of running and wrestling in France that date back over 15,000 years, as well as 12,000-year-old Egyptian depictions of swimming and archery. It's believed that the switch from hunter-gatherer to farming left hunters with not as much to do. And and seeing as running, wrestling, archery, and swimming are all things involved in hunting, this makes sense. People something to do other than sit around fires and tell stories. I mean, hunters would still hunt, the Neanderthals didn't wipe themselves out, you know, but not nearly as much. It also kept warriors in shape for when they needed to, you know, warrior, and in many cases replaced warfare as the way for villages to compete against one another. We found tablets showing wrestling in Sumer dating back to 3000 BC, as well as this statue of wrestlers from 2600 BC. It's also believed that boxing 
Nicene may have originated in Sumer. We've also found evidence from Egypt dating back to around 2000 BC that shows wrestling, weightlifting, long jump, high jump, swimming, rowing, javelin throwing, archery, and fishing. And of course, the ancient Greeks held the Olympics at least as far back as 776 BC. Sports developed in pretty much every civilization. Kuju was an early version of soccer introduced in China during the 2nd or 3rd century BC. Hurling in Ireland actually predates writing in that area and goes back to at least 1200 BC. The ancient Greeks had a ball game called Episkyros, which the Romans took and changed because that's kind of what Romans did, into their version known as Harpostum. Greece and Rome also loved chariot racing, and the Romans, of course, had their gladiators that fought each other or wild animals. Ancient Persia invented early versions of polo and jousting. There's evidence of sports being played in North America at least back to 5000 BC. And of course, Japan had sumo wrestling, which was first mentioned in 712. That, that's 712 AD, not BC. Now, when a lot of people think of sports in history, they tend to think of medieval jousting tournaments, where knights would practice and hone their combat skills through jousting on horses as well as sword fighting on foot. These tournaments were an important part of creating and maintaining the ideal of chivalry. However, jousting began to fall out of fashion and by the mid-1600s had all but been replaced with non-combat horse sports. Yeah, I know, I could have said equestrian, but we're going with horse sports. Typically involving the knights either riding in a circle and tossing a ball to each other or trying to get their lance into a suspended ring. These were known as carousel, and yeah, that's where the name for the ride comes from. The British, for the most part, are where the push for team sports came from. Shrove Tide football goes back to the 1100s, and the Brits were also responsible for the creation of cricket, pool, hockey, and bowling. Spectator sports have become more prevalent, many believe as a way to get away from the drudgery of everyday life, and to offer common people something bigger than themselves to be a part of and root for. And some sports have existed for thousands of years, but weren't particularly popular, such as boxing, which rose significantly in popularity after 1867, and the introduction of the Marquis of Queensbury rules, which set the size of the ring, the length of the rounds, which was three minutes with a one-minute rest between each round, added the ten count for knockdowns, forbade wrestling and grappling, and required the use of gloves. It also grew in popularity among males of the upper class as a way to stay manly or something or other. Teddy Roosevelt was a perfect example of this. The president was a huge fan of boxing to the extent that he continued to hold boxing matches while in the White House, and supposedly was partially blinded in one eye during a sparring session in 1905 with Colonel Daniel T. Moore, who was a frequent opponent of Roosevelt as well as a military aide and his cousin-in-law. They kept this a secret for over a decade, by the way, and eventually Roosevelt had to stop boxing as he got older and arthritis set in. But I mean, we gotta admit, that man truly was a bull moose. Oh, and rolling back to the Romans and their zany antics in the Colosseum, in addition to gladiators fighting or people being eaten, they would also reenact battles, and this included flooding the Colosseum in order to recreate naval battles. Now, that would have been a sight to see. <laughs> Get it? Naval? See? <laughs> All right, so that kind of tells you, I mean, things haven't changed. We have a lot of entertainment that we show from, you know, whether it's Dancing with the Stars or uh, what we see on TV today. Um, sports have always been kind of entertainment um, and have gone for a long time. Okay, your third letter for the word of the week is A. A. All right, so the Paleothean, <laughs> I get, I have a hard time saying the Paleo area, which is inside this Paleo. Um, they they didn't have most of their time was spent, you know, hunting and gathering, but they would display different parts of like taxidermy. Okay, um, that even goes on today. Uh, we, we kind of think of it as almost like a trophy. Okay, so. If uh, I were a man back in that era, era, you know, to kind of show my prestige or whatever of, you know, I've killed a certain animal or um, I'd have a certain skull and that kind of stuff, which isn't like too much with today. It's kind of like a, a trophy that we kind of see here. So, for example, 
I'm gonna grab something off my shelf here. I have it. So you can probably see this a little bit. So this is uh, actually a bear skull. Um, so that's one of the things I like to do. I like to hunt and yes, I do eat the meat and everything, but um, this is a bear skull of a bear I got in Alaska. So um, same have like the same kind of trophies today. And it did. Um, it did take a lot, but you can see how people are looking to get trophies, that kind of stuff. There's more, um, you know, back then they, they used dancing and stuff. They would dance around fires. That's how they would entertain themselves, right? Which is a lot like today. Humans have not changed a lot. We just have new technologies and stuff that come into play. Uh, in ancient China, uh, they people that engage in swords trace back to the 4000 BC. Um, if we, we think about dances and stuff like that, you have school dances uh, these days. Um, there's different kind of things. If you they had sword play back in China, polo, Chinese golf is what they call it, ice skating, um, ancient football, but more like soccer, right? Is what we'd call it, archery. Who can be the best? There's this competition. Um, and this happened all the way back when. Okay, your fourth letter of for the word of the week is N. So make sure you write that down, N. Okay, the ancient Egyptians, okay, uh, they would do monuments to the ther uh, pharaoh, but in their writings, as you can kind of see here, they had things like throwing the javelin, uh, fishing, okay, uh, being able to swim, wrestling, a uh, different type of hockey, handball, high jump, wrestling, all of those kind of things uh, they would do to entertain themselves to all that stuff in ancient greece is that's not coming up hold on sometimes there we go uh ancient greece they had more of a military culture kind of thing so we talked about the chariot races um boxing was kind of the big one they were the first ones to start the olympic games okay every four years uh, the sports, dance, and artistic talents were kind of showed in the Olympics. And that is a tradition that's been continuing on for years and years now. And we still have the Olympics. It's a really good way to unite everybody um, in one way or another. Okay, your fifth letter for the word of the week is G. Make sure you write that down, G. Okay, here's some timelines uh, with some different things that go on. So some of more uh, sports have been along for a long time. Horse racing, fencing, marbles, cricket. Uh, they had dancing for a long, long time, right? Uh, black, back in the colonial American era. The Industrial Revolution. Uh, this is kind of what you're dancing and stuff would look like here uh still more of a lot of horse racing they started putting money on different things which they've always done i uh, think about the gladiators in the coliseum they would put money on on who would win uh started being more organized sports and become more of a an actual huge business right when you look at different teams um you think of some of these organizations now uh, like the NBA, where they're bringing in billions of dollars and teams are worth billions of dollars. Uh, they'd always have socializing, getting together for dances, uh, school dance. You have dance competitions. Uh, I'm sure some of you like to go into dance. I know my, my daughter, she likes going to dance and just learning different things like that. And it's something you can do for 
you know, finding some activities, probably not boxing. You don't want to do boxing your entire life, but there's, there's different activities out there you can do for your entire life. So today's sporting and games, uh, the biggest ones that are followed, uh, soccer. Okay. And that's just more of like globally, uh, cricket estimated followers, 2.5 billion more in like the UK field hockey, tennis, a lot of followers, about a billion volleyball, table tennis, basketball globally, but it's not as big as something like baseball, rugby, and golf, which is interesting. You think that the NFL would be higher up there, but that's more of just an American um, kind of sport. Okay, today's dancing, uh, where they kind of have influence from. So Bollywood dancing in India, ballet and in rut from Russia. All these are going break dancing from the United States, belly dancing, salsa, samba. You can kind of see where where those are. There's a lot of different genres of of dance that you can do, which is all very good exercise. Okay, so here's some things like what do you predict will change in sports and dance um, throughout the years? Uh, one thing that I can think of is with technology becoming so big that some of these things are going to be online. I was listening to podcasts about virtual reality and uh, being able to do things virtually rather than there. So I think some things are going to change that way, but it will be changing a little bit and adapting, but it will always be here, um, sports and dance. Okay, your final letter uh, for the week, word of the week is E. Okay, and that is your word. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can do me. I'm just going to pull over, and hopefully this shows up on the screen for you, uh, the course real quick. Remember, I always post the course reportings. I'm sorry about this less lesson the audio was not good i'm hoping the audio is good on this one i'll check it before i post it um, if you go into the course plan real quick you'll see we have a live recording and that um all the stuff that would do is this week will be due on the sixth and so i will put that down there if you go into content i'm going to open up this one now uh, you will have the activity log, and then you have the history of sports and dance uh, quiz that will go off of this and the Nearpod. So those will be available to you now. Uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I'll help you with anything you need. So thank you so much for uh, for watching this, and I will see you online.